Hi guys, welcome back to Mel's Kitchen. This week I am going to be showing you how to make one of our favorite family friendly meals. And the day of filming, today is Tuesday, so we are actually having tacos for Taco Tuesday. It's one of my kids' favorites. And I like it because it's one where they can make themselves, they get their hands in, they choose vegetables, which is awesome. Often it's a struggle to get your kids to eat veggies, but this one is a no-brainer. Now, when you're making tacos, the first thing you want to think about is how you are going to season your tacos. So you can buy store-bought variety for sure, and I'm going to show you a healthy and a maybe not so healthy variety, and I'm also going to show you how to make your own. So let's get started first with the bear. Let's just talk about the not so healthy. So this is your main brand of taco seasoning that you can buy in the stores. Now I'm going to read out the ingredients to you. You can have the first ingredient is cornstarch, then salt, maltodextrin, spices, sugar, onion powder, high monounsaturated vegetable oil, in brackets canola, soybean and or sunflower, silicon dioxide and natural flavours. Now I'm not a big fan of this, first because the ingredient, first ingredient is cornstarch, which probably is um, genetically modified because it doesn't say otherwise and over 90% of corn ingredients are genetically modified. Um, and maltodextrin too, and the amount of sodium. So there's 350 milligrams in just one sixth of this package, okay? So what I'm going to show you is a healthier store-bought version. This is one I love, Simply Organic, and this is a lot of my spices are from Simply Organic. They come in a lovely glass jar. This one, this is a mild taco simmer sauce. This one actually says for chicken, but I'm gonna use it in beef. You can use it in chicken, ground turkey, but I'm going to read out the ingredients and you can see the difference. <clears throat> so in this one, we've got water, organic tomatoes, organic roasted chili pepper, organic garlic, cilantro, sea salt, organic canola oil, organic onion, organic lime juice concentrate, organic cane sugar, organic chili pepper, organic paprika, organic cumin, organic coriander, and organic cayenne pepper. <clears throat> Excuse me. So this one, I can pronounce all the ingredients. There's no chemicals in there. Um, so this is a really great alternative and it tastes great. It's one of my favorites. And this is the one I'm actually gonna use today. So I'm gonna pop that over there. But what I'm gonna show you is how you can make your own. The ingredients that are, the recipe I'm gonna give you today, it's gonna make more than you'll need for one meal. Okay, one serving is just two tablespoons of this per pound of ground meat. Okay, but you can sit, store it in a mason jar in a cold, dark cupboard and it'll be great. Okay, great for like three or four months. First ingredient, in here I have a quarter cup of onion powder, then I'm going to put, I think it's one tablespoon of garlic powder. When you're buying spices, you want to make sure of the ingredients, okay? You want to make sure that there are no chemicals added. I remember one time I was in the grocery store and I bought a pack of cinnamon, or I picked up a pack of cinnamon, looked on the back, and there was like five different chemicals added. I was like, wow, it's just totally unexpected. Um, so just make sure. Okay, so I have one tablespoon of garlic powder, quarter cup of onion powder. I'm going to put in one tablespoon of sea salt, or actually two tablespoons of sea salt, sorry. Then I'm going to put in, I think it's one, two tablespoons of chili powder. That's good. Two tablespoons of chili powder. There's one. Oh, let's see, I'm not fancy. I'm doing the fancy way. And then I'm going to throw in one tablespoon of cumin. If you like heat, you can add in um, red chili peppers. I tend to keep it out because I'm cooking for the whole family. My husband would love me to add the hot spices, but Sam, my youngest, would not be very happy and he wouldn't eat any. So I'm gonna leave those out, but you could add just a tablespoon of red pepper flakes, something like that in to give it an extra bit of heat. And then I'm going to put in two teaspoons of oregano. And then the last ingredient is one tablespoon of arrowroot powder. Now arrowroot powder is just gonna help bind it. I'm just gonna grab my mint whisk. Okay, so then I'm just going to whisk all this together. And it's as easy as that. You have your own taco seasoning. And this will last you if you're um, probably for four to six meals. If you're only putting in a couple of tablespoons at a time, uh, may even be more than that, six to eight meals probably. So store it in a mason jar, like I said, and pop it in the cupboard. Okay, so that's done. We talked about the taco seasoning. Next thing you need to think about is what meat you're gonna use. So I'm using ground beef today. Um, you can use ground turkey, you can use ground chicken. 
There's even for the vegetarian options, um, jackfruit is a really great um, alternative, or you can use some um, tofu if you want to. But we are meat eaters in this house. So in here, I have cooked up a pound of ground beef with a little bit of avocado oil. This is the avocado oil I buy. Again, I get it from Costco. I like I either use avocado oil or coconut oil for my cooking. It tends to be um, better because it's more heat stable. So then all I do is once I've um, heated up or cooked the um, browned, I should say, the ground beef on the stove, if there's a lot of fat, then I will just drain most of the fat, keep it in there, and then put the beef back into the pan, and then I just, all you do, easy as this, open it up, and I'll show you, and pour it in. My goodness, could not get easier. And then all you have to do is heat that through. I'm gonna turn the oven up. Now, if you're using the dry, rub that I made, um, what you can do, some people like it really dry, I'll just add a little bit of water with it, or what you can do is add like about a quarter of a cup of salsa to it, and that makes it, um, gives it a nice flavour, adds to the flavour, but it also makes it a little bit softer if you don't like it dry. We always used, <coughs> always used to do the dry version, and then I discovered this, and my kids love it, so I'll just heat that through. Now, the next thing with tacos, we have talked about the taco seasoning, we have talked about um, what meat or what protein that you want to use. The next thing is your toppings. So that's really where my kids love to um, take part. So my kids' favorites are red pepper or any pepper, pepper chopped up, um, chopped up a whole load of grape tomatoes, red onion, we do cheese, so I'll grate some cheese. Um, if you're vegan or vegetarian, then you could use um, some of this. This is my favorite shredded dairy-free cheese. This is by a company called Earth Island, and I got this at <gasps> Sobeys. Salsa, we love salsa, obviously, to go on top. Um, and what else? Oh, guacamole. Guacamole is another favorite of ours that we have every time we have tacos. My kids love guacamole just with some blue corn chips for an after school snack too, or any, any time snack. So I'm gonna show you how to make quick and easy guacamole. You can buy it again in the grocery stores, but this honestly takes five minutes and it's super easy. The main thing you wanna make sure that you have ripe avocados. When you're at the grocery store, see this one? I bought this today. Um, yes, it's softer, um, and it's darker on the outside. When they're unripe, obviously they're gonna be bright green. But what you can do is you take that off and you see it's still green inside. That's how I know that it's still green inside the avocado. So that's a good tip. Anyway, so all you do, cut the avocado in half. And then, easy as that, I'm gonna squeeze that into my bowl here. So you can see a little bit better, there we go. And then take out the pit and squeeze the other half into the bowl. And then all I add, I'm going to cut a lime in half, squeeze half a lime in there. Some of these limes, they're super easy to get juice out of and others are like, ah, oh, you hardly get anything out of. Anyway, you squeeze as much as you can. You can use lemon juice too, I just always prefer lime. Um, where's my cumin? Okay. And then I just add a, I don't even measure it out. Honestly, I put just a little dash of cumin in there, some salt and pepper. And honestly, this is it. This is guacamole and it's the best guacamole. Now, if you want to fancy things up, you could add um, a clove of garlic mince. You could add in some chopped up red onion. You could add in some chopped up tomato. The only time I fancy it up is if I'm taking it to someone else's house. <laughs> For us, it's just this basic guacamole, which is honestly amazing. Okay, so taco mix done. Beef for me, or whatever protein you're having cooking, with sauce or taco seasoning, done. Toppings, done. Now you can, the toppings I, um, I've said to you are just our basic ones. We also add in, I haven't cut it up yet, is um, spinach, baby spinach, or romaine lettuce, 
or collard greens, anything like that. I always try and get to a, um, some form of greens in there. And then, but what you can do is you can really make it fancy. You could add in some shredded carrots. You could add in some shredded cabbage. If you really want to take it up a notch and um, give your digestion some big love, what you can do is add in a little bit of sauerkraut, add in a little bit of kimchi, something like that, these fermented foods. I tend to do that. My kids won't eat that. But what I will do, because I don't always have tacos in the wrap or the shells, I make a big taco salad. So when I'm making a big taco salad, super easy. Just do a bed of greens, whatever greens you want. Then you can put all your toppings on. So you put your meat on, um, you put your, your tomatoes, your onions. Sometimes I add some black beans if I'm having it in a salad. You can put your pepper on. If I'm having my vegan cheese, I'll add it on. Or you can eat your regular cheese some guacamole and then all I do is add, uh, I'll make up a dressing so it's like two tablespoons of olive oil to a table and a half, uh, one and a half tablespoons of lime juice and it's as simple as that, you just put that and then if you mix it in and you have that guacamole too it gets nice and creamy. So I will often have that in alternative to having the wraps. Let me just quickly give this a stir. Oh it's looking good, see this is how that one, you see, nice and juicy. Perfect. I'm going to turn that down a little bit so it just simmers. Now the only other thing with tacos that we have to think about is what vessel is going to carry the tacos. Now, again, these are probably your most common. You can get the standard stuffed shells, which my kids love. You can get just the regular shells. Um, now these aren't the best, okay? I'll read out the ingredients. There's not many ingredients in here. Sorry, get my glasses on. So yellow corn flour with hydrated lime, palm oil and salt. The biggest thing is the palm oil. It's a refined oil, okay? And again, the corn is genetically modified. So they're not like the worst thing that you can have, but they're not the greatest. So we try and balance things out in this house. My kids love these, so sometimes we have these. Other times I will vary up. And I've got a wide range of things to show you. So you can buy just even the plain yellow corn is here but again the ingredients are stone ground corn massa flour cellulose gum fumaric acids calcium proponate potassium sorbate trace of lime and salt again longer ingredients list than this okay these are my favorite but um, can't get my kids to eat them but this is what I will often have it's a wrap it up raw wrap and the ingredients are carrots, ground flax, sun-dried tomatoes, red pepper, onion, garlic, parsley, lemon juice, Italian seasoning, salt and pepper. Now they are more of an acquired taste. I'll take them out and show you what they look like. But honestly, I love them. This is what it looks like. And I buy these in the um, in Metro. They have a standalone freezer here in the Orangeville one um, with all the gluten-free bagels and I buy them in there. So I love to have those. It's tough to find a good tortilla in the grocery store that doesn't have a whole long list of ingredients or decent ingredients. And I've done a lot of searching and these are the best two that I have found. So, um, and both of these I get at Sobeys. They're the only place in town here in Orangeville that I can get these two wraps, okay? So first one being a company called Sonora. And this is a, um, a flour tortilla, no artificial flavors, colors, or preservatives, non-GMO ingredients, 100% vegan. So the ingredients on this one are wheat flour, water, palm oil, shortening, cultured wheat flour, salt, sunflower, lecithin, cane sugar, baking powder, rice flour, citric acid, inactive yeast, guar gum, cellulose gum, and that's it. So again, quite a long list, and it has palm oil shortening in, which I'm not really a big fan of. But these are my favorites. So a company called Let Tortilla Factory. They do a wide range of wraps, but unfortunately here in Orangeville, we aren't able to get many of them. If you're lucky enough to go to um, other areas where you can go to places like Whole Foods or Nature's Emporium, then you're likely to get a wide range of the wraps that these guys do. Um, this is a whole wheat tortilla. This is the large size. They do do a smaller, but this was the only one I could get today. Non-GMO project verified. Um, let's see the ingredients. Water, oat hull fiber, whole wheat flour, soy flour, wheat gluten, canola oil, baking powder, sea salt, guar gum, citric acid, yeast, xanthan gum, sorbic acid, and calcium proponate. 
So again, longer ingredients, but it's non-GMO, no hydrogenated or interesterified oils. I don't know what that word says, but let's say just no hydrogenated oils. Um, and no monoindicer and diglycerides. <laughs> See, this is where I struggle. If you can't read ingredients, then you shouldn't be buying it. But this one's saying no to all of that, so this is a good one. And one thing I love about this, one tortilla, you're getting 13 grams of fiber. I'm always about the fiber, baby. So if you can, purchase something like this. But it really is a preference. So again, like I said, sometimes we have these. Other times, we have these. Well, the kids do anyway. Um, a lot of the time, I will have my wrap it up raw or I make it into a salad. So really, it is as easy as that. I will post a picture later of what the finished taco, one of my kids' tacos looks like and maybe what mine looks like. But really, that is as easy as that. The nice thing is, you could prep your, in, your toppings the night before or the morning of. You could even cook the meat up the night before and then all you have to do is reheat it. But really, cooking the meat on the stove, adding the sauce, takes like, I would say, what, 10 minutes tops? And then it's a really quick and easy and fun one for the kids to put together themselves and feel like they're being interactive. You can serve it with a salad. If you want to be really fancy, you could make you could serve it with like a bean or a Mexican type salad, bean and corn salad. Or you can serve it with a green salad to get extra veggies in. But this is a nice one. This is why I wanted to start with this one for you because it is so family friendly. If there's any other recipes that you and your family like that you would like to see healthified, put a note in the comments. Please post pictures if you make any of my recipes or post comments as to what you thought of it, what your family thought of it. And if you think anyone would benefit from these recipes, please share it on your social media and subscribe to my YouTube channel so you do not miss out on any more recipes. I hope you enjoyed this week's um, recipe and I will be back with you very shortly. Bye guys, thanks for watching.